Rear pot angle is a new setup adjustment that you can do on the X1225 and it's made possible for the fact that we now have the rear pod sitting above the chassis plate in the rear and thus you're able to set a angle of the rear pod in relation to the chassis plate if you want to. Uh, the initial setting in the kit recommended setting has this measurement here between the the chassis and um, the pod set at 3.5 millimeters. It's easiest to measure this with a caliper. And you had a little set screw here in the back, which you can adjust uh, up and down, and this will determine the, um, the distance between the chassis plate and the pod, and this will does make it possible to set a pod angle in this case. And having the pod sit flat, so no angle towards the front or rear, gives you the most neutral handling. This is the best initial setting that we suggest starting with for most conditions. If you then adjust this angle by loosening or tightening this set screw at the back of the car, you can increase the pod angle towards the front. So if you tighten the screw, you increase the gap to say 3.8 or 4 millimeters instead of 3.5, you create an effect that's called pro squat. So pro squat's gonna give you more traction on power, the car's gonna be more locked in, and the chassis is gonna want to squat more on power, basically. That's what it does. If you do the opposite, you loosen the set screw to decrease the gap between the chassis and the pod, you create the opposite effect, which is called anti-squat. And this does what it suggests. It um, resists squatting on power, which gives you more on power steering, uh, more overall steering, the car will be more loose, more difficult to drive. And uh, in this case, instead of 3.5, you will go to 3.3 or even 3.0. But it should be within that, within that range between 4.0 and 3.0, I wouldn't go to any uh, more extreme setting than that. But you can fine tune this in steps of 0.2 millimeters and you can achieve uh, big gains for uh, certain track conditions. So I really recommend playing with this and see what gains you can make for your specific track conditions. One thing to keep in mind when you change the, the pod angle in the rear is that you'll also change the ride height by making this this change. So you need to uh, make sure that the two interact properly. So in this case, we have 3.8 ride height in the rear. And as I showed you just now, the pod angle is 3.7 millimeters. We're going to decrease this gap here to the initial setting, which is 3.5. It's fine like that. And what you'll notice now is that the ride height would, will have come down 0.2 millimeters. So to compensate for this, you'll need to change the axle inserts to the appropriate right height that you want to run after making the pod angle adjustment. So keep in mind that the rear bump spring tension, the rear pod droop, which is adjusted with the rear bump spring tension, the axle height and the pod angle is all interacting. So you need to set them all in relation to each other. So when you change one, you need to check all the others, except for the, the pod, pod angle, of course, that will stay the same unless you physically change the, the height of the screw.